chat, welcome. Today we're playing Death and Taxes, which also has a streamer mode, wherein you are able to vote whether people should live or die. I assume it functions off of, here's a paper, and I myself, the streamer, cannot decide if the person should live and die. Live or die, you can't do both. And so I look over at Chet, and I say, what do you think, Chet? And I pull out a little clipboard, and then everybody in Chet makes their little marks on some little voting forms, and we slap it up in. So if that comes up, you would say exclamation point death? Or exclamation point, okay. And it should be pretty obvious which one does what. I don't know, Gecko, I'm alive, but I feel pretty dead inside. Well, ultimately, what wins out is the fact, are you actually living? Doesn't matter how dead you feel, if you're ultimately still alive. But here we go. Death and Taxes, new game. Here we go with the intro. Got nice little tabley here. We've got guy with yellow bow tie walking in who's fate, keeper of the world order. He looks down and uh-oh, he's missing some lemons. Wonder if that's gonna be a problem for him. Oh, lemons, he's even got a yellow bow tie. What if he just took off his tie and slapped it down as the ingredient? Oh, he sighs. He takes a little walk. Look, we've got wacky Beatles reference, Abbey Road. Here he is at the market, shopping for those sick lemons. He can't, he doesn't have time to wait in line though. So, um, oops, everybody's dead in there. He does a little bit of magic. Ooh, it's me, Chet. I'm the Grim Reaper. When life gives you lemons. Don't be standing in front of him in line at the grocery store. Oh, whoa, he did some makeup. A ghostly skeleton, that's pretty good. All right, I like this ghost skeleton. I'm gonna opt for that. Oh my God, what the fuck? Now this, now this is a suit that's gonna grab some attention, huh? Hmm? Oh, of course, we've got split suit. It's kind of like living in death. Oh, no. Here, we were distracted by the red with cheetah print suit. Why not have every suit kind of at once? Red checkerboard, black and white checkerboard, blue suit, cheetah print. I don't know what this F stands for. I can only imagine this is a reference, but... They say this is the last thing you see before you die. Right here, hang on. This is the last thing you see before you die. Money man. The money reaper. Hello there, Steven and Fleetle Deedle. Welcome to the stream. An actual e-clown, there you go. <laughs> oh, this one's pretty good. Look, it looks like there are little flames coming out of his pocket and there's flames up on his shirt. There's a lot more suits than I was expecting. This one's kind of nice though, because I like how the blue on the suit fits in with the blue of my skull. No hair horns option. What, what if I just go buy a wig, right? Then I could have them. I think we're going to go with flame and suit right here. You know, oh, oh. No, I can't even remember the name. Man, fuck, I don't know why the name escapes me, but it's comic and was also movie. You have Nick Cage as the Grim Reaper, man. Ghost Rider. That's it. I'm ready for my bureaucratic afterlife. It's a flaming suit, which means it's not a suit, it's a soot. Amazing. Comedy. 
everybody nods in appreciation of the pun. Finally, the new spawn has awoken. What a momentous day. I am honored to welcome you into our world, spawn. Uh, hang on. Spawn number 36. I am fate. I am the keeper of world order. Alright, so this is me answering. Uh, I guess we're gonna start off and be kind of confused. Where am I? What What's going on exactly, eh? Straight to the point. Great. You are in my office. Here to work as a Grim Reaper. I come in here and the first thing I get is punishment. The classic pun joke where you slap and uh, just emphasize the pun in the word punishment. Wow, wow, wow. Advanced pun dynamics there. And welcome, Grobas, to the stream. Welcome to your new job as an overseer of Cosmopolis City Subdivision Number 4, the Sun County Wine Region. Wine Region? Hmm. I know what you are thinking, and yes, your assignment is choosing humans who have to die. Pretty standard stuff. As it is your first day, try to get to know the system and do not destroy the world. Yes? Ha 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 Gallows humor. You see? Well, right. Yes. Mm -hmm. Clear. Have to kill people, not ready, whatever you say. Well, I get paid. You know, this is kind of a priority. If he's saying I'm the Grim Reaper, pretty obvious that I'm going to kill people. But do I get paid? And you're right, there is voice acting. I kind of thought there was too and was confused that I wasn't hearing it. Voice seems to have gotten knocked all the way down. Let me turn that up. Ah. I think we're gonna have to wait till his next line. Most certainly. The contract stipulates that every death gets a fair salary based on their performance accuracy. Chat, we're gonna get paid. Well, thanks, but you also just gave me something to ponder on. <gasps> Using pun twice. I can't believe this chat scandalized. Marking profiles correct is the most important task. If you mark more or less than necessary, you will not get your fee at all. Here we go. Now we have some voice acting. I think it's still a little quiet. Ah! We'll turn that up. I don't know why that crow is so much louder in comparison, but okay. Okay, so we not to do proper markings that way we get paid if we want to get paid we have to do things Errors right Errors in secondary tasks will reduce the total even if the primary task is <laughs> executed correctly get it right there there it is eh we give fate over here a golf clap remember the fate of the world lies in your hands. Humans march towards the great dying. They always teeter on the precipice, creating endless chaos. Ugh, that doesn't sound very balanced. And yeah, that means we can't kill everybody, Chet. It's true. If we want to get paid, we can't just say, die, 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 die. We only can do what the we guidelines are. We keep humans from falling off. We establish the equilibrium and keep the chaos in check. For that reason, your actions will have consequences. So the world is one big teeter-totter? A little bit. So we have to manage... I guess though in teeter-tottering you like to go up and down on both sides. In this case, if we want to maintain balance, you want to minimize the teeter-tottering. Um, Chet, I think I was born to get- to be paid to kill people. Yes, you It's were. all for me. Literally. I will now show you your workplace. See, even Fate agrees. He says, yep, that's why you exist. One more thing. 
This will be your seven day evaluation period. When the week is done, you will be assessed. I don't like the way you put asterisks around assessed. One week to show us what you are made of, Reaper. Okay, Fate, haha, <laughs> if you say so. Well, Chet, I guess here's the first day. Oh, we're getting a text on our phone. At Galaxy Brain, black holes set to end all life? I'm not gonna worry about that. I I'm gonna go ahead and focus on my job. I could commune with the voices of the ether to help me decide. Oh, here we go. It's voting. There you go, chat. It looks like every time I open it, it starts resets. So let's... Let's go ahead and test that out in just a moment. We got the Cerberus Den. Feed your soul. Open on weekends. There's a bar here. Let me just put that over there. So this time, hello Grim. Here are the files on humans who are in life-threatening situations within your domain. I am granting you time to settle in, so no difficult rules and requests as of today. So we just have to kill one person. And so we want to send... Afterwards, it says, send me the files by fax after you've made your decision. Good luck on your first day. By fax. What is this? Looking in the past over here. Nothing in the drawer. Nothing in the drawer. Deus Fax Machina. I still need to mark some of the profiles before I end my shift. The Deus Fax Machina. Bet you've got a peek for two. Haha. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we would opt for that option if, you know, we didn't have a phone sitting right here, so, you know. Okay, chat. So we've got two people here. We've got Melissa S. McGill, special agent. This agent for the Bureau of Agricultural Espionage has always wanted to be a bodyguard for the president as they have extensive experience in safeguarding the well-being of crops and other flora. They once even played double agent for two contesting potato magnates. And so Melissa hopes to be a bodyguard for the president one day. Plant spies, yeah. And then we have Matthias over here. It has been said that Matthias talks too much. However, they themselves think they may not be talking enough at all. Space radiation is their passion, and they are endlessly fascinated by black holes. Black holes set to end all life. Could Matthias one day... Does he work with big space? Do you think one day Matthias might figure out how to save our world from black holes? Hmm. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and test out, see how this works, if it works at all. Since we only want one of them dead, we'll just do the vote on one of them, and if you vote for that person to live, or if you vote for that person to die, then the other person will get the opposite treatment. So we've got Special Agent Plant Lady and Matthias, Black Hole Lover, Student. We'll go ahead and put the poll up or voting up for Matthias. Does Black Hole Man live or die? Hey, open up the book. Type in exclamation point death if you think he should die and exclamation part point okay if you think he should live. And then, oh, there we go. I can see the scale just tipped. So, it, it, uh, there we go. It is indeed working. Here we go, chat. Slap done your votes. And there we go. Voting is finished. You've all voted for okay. So, black hole man gets to live so I grab my marker here let me just pull up this again eh. and since that 
Matthias over there is living. That means sorry, Special Agent Plant Lady. You're dying. He's got a lot more time in his life anyway, so come on. Matthias, you better figure out how to solve black holes, though. Otherwise, I'm going to be very disappointed. And there we go. And then we get into the elevator so we can return back up to Fate. All right, Fate, I finished my first day. How are you? Oh, the new Death Spawn. Welcome. How was your first day? Really good. I got to read some information about some people, and I got to commune with the, I don't know, the dead? And they helped me choose who to keep and who to abandon, so it was great. And hello there, Bomb Pit, and welcome to the stream. You hate this guy's face? Fate hates your face too, I'm sure. Great. We are counting on your dedication. You do important work, after all. Are we dead? I mean, we are the Grim Reaper and we were a skeleton, so I'm going to say, yeah, we're dead. Remember, lives are on the line. What? I don't think you need to remind me of that. We just fucking literally mark dead or exactly alive, so. One person perished today, as tasked. Did you figure out the best choice? Him? Yes, I did. I am very good at making the decisions, especially with assistance, so I did make the best to be honest, choice. I gave a simple one to begin with. There was no best choice. Oh, uh, I can argue that Sometimes point. Sometimes none of the options are good. Not for everyone. That doesn't mean there can't exist a best choice there, sir. Such is the unfortunate, indisputable, incontrovertible iron-clad law of cosmos. Question? Uh, no, I think we're good, chat, huh? We're ready for anything. We think on our feet, we react as things come. We're good, we're good. I also think the music is also a little bit on the quiet side, so let me bring that up a bit. <gasps> as the crow fucking screams at us. Keep your eye on the letter for future guidelines, and keep up the good work. A new day awaits. Off you go now. The crow spooked you again. I don't know why the crow is so much louder after you adjust the volume pieces, but I don't know. I guess the crow just wants to scream at you. I also like the music in this area. Is a... Uh, this place also has a fucking- ooh! I wasn't expecting a secret store down here, hang on. What ho, customer! Welcome to Quartermanter Mortimer's Plunder Emporium! As you may guess, I am Mortimer. THE Mortimer. The ooh. one you may have heard of. The famous, well. nay, infamous Quartermaster! A bandana? Is this actually Skelly? Skelly is in the game? Oh my god. It looks like also actually he's got a little, little tufts of hair coming out as well. So he's even got a beautiful skeletal ma uh, mane. So uh, what makes you infamous exactly? Why? I was the very Pirate King of Lore, feared across the world. Even as I have grown most humble with age, I still carry within me glory day. Very humble. As I come out here and he goes, look, I'm, I'm Mortimer, you know, the famous one. Very humble. Uh, pretty cool there, man. I, the Emporium brims with plunder. I plundered myself. Browse at your will. All right, Mortimer. He, he's so cool! <laughs> he's my new idol! Wow! Alright, so we've got three pieces here. We've got this mask, the Calavera clothing. Only a noble craftsman can craft an elfinique of this caliber. Exquisite. 
tasty? No one can deny I'd have the sweetest possible visage if I wore this. So I would look very good if I got this one. And then we have the Threnody to Desolation a widget. Peculiar flex twirl disquietingly inside this glass globe, never settling. In the middle of the storm stand figures too difficult to discern. Everything seems to be in a state of constant transfiguration. I don't know what that one does. I imagine it changes something? So I don't know. Banacker? I don't know. Then we also have a cactus. Cactus, the most brutal of plants, because it's covered in spines. Look at them. You can count them and their deadly nature. One, two, three, four, five. I think that's a sixth right there. This is a very dangerous plant. Buy the cactus. Ah, oh, look at my money. 300. Look at the cost on the cactus. 800. We can't afford that. The only thing we can afford is actually that mask. Which I don't think I want right now. I want to hoard my money. And it seems I thought this was separate and there was just a weird spooky coffin over here. But no, it's part of his emporium, so it's fine. I've heard a lot of cactus owners can be... Prickling. And now it's time for a new day back here down at the office. Oh, look! What? Okay, I'm gonna pull out my drawer here so I can put my spooky death tokens down into it. Look at that. Wonderful. I don't know why this one... Oh no, I think they all are. Okay. They look kind of like tiny insects crawling off the coins, honestly, also. All right, let's shut the book. Got some new tweets down here, too. So we have signs today, vast advances being made in research of reusable fuel cells. Uh, researchers credit young talent involved in special project. We have Crow News, several members of high-ranking politician security detail injured and one dead as fireworks display goes awry at public event. I wonder if this would include that special agent lady. Fracking linked to earthquakes, new research confirms. And discrimination in the industry. For years, Axela Luke has had to work in the film industry under the pseudonym Antonio Mazzalo. Oh. We'll go ahead and put that back down. And what we got today? Morning, Grim. I hope you found your accommodations adequate. Here are the rules of the day. Follow them and you will be okay. I am handing you another simple task. So we want to kill one human with an engineering or industrial background. So we just have to kill one human with that background. So if we had someone completely unrelated, like I can see this person right here is a filmmaker, I don't think we have to kill her, because that does not sound like engineering or industrial. But we'll go ahead- wait a second. Axela Luke. Right here. The culture mag was just talking about her. So, Axela fled a military conflict to Cosmopolis City at a young age, working many odd jobs until they met and married respected avant-garde filmmaker Oscar Luke. The two form an unbreakable creative team, producing one film a year, with Axela often being the decisive and innovative half of the duo. We probably will just straight mark her as Liv, because that, that doesn't fit in the criteria for people we have to kill. Uh, Marie, however, over here, architect. Marie is all about living in the present, their past long forgotten. Several years ago, they moved to live near the glacier at Northern Point, 
Marie has always loved mountaineering, photography, sculpturing, and modern dance. So she has an architecture position, but she's all about the art things. And hello there, kitty, and welcome to the stream. I hope you're doing well. And then we also have Rajesh Nekavi. Rajesh is in the fracking industry for the money. And no cries from environmentalists will make them rethink. They are determined to rise on the career ladder and become the boss of the fracking firm someday. Yeah, he's a fracker. And hello there, GLRP, and welcome to the stream also. So, uh, this is an easy choice. I can even see Chad over there going, Ugh! Ugh! What a fucking monster! It's almost too easy! We kill him. With these two, however, you get to live. Live and live. Ta-da! And thus completes our papers for the day. Ta-da! Ahem. Ta-da! Yes. Frack you, bud. Ho, 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 ha. And then we rise back up to the top so we can talk to Faith. Hi, Faith. I'm here for my paycheck. Grim, how was the second day on the job? Great, as always. It gladdens me to hear that. So, did you follow the rules properly? All I almost did. I looked at the paperwork and oopsie daisy, I accidentally marked Excel up for death and I left the other two alive. I almost got it, but I failed. Great. Yes, everything looks to be in order. Continue the good work and do not let tough choices get you down. I should pro. You know. When you, when you work, a job you love isn't every day a vacation? I look at the camera, smiling. You can see through my eyes that I'm dead inside. Great indeed. We could use more spawns with your attitude. Day two. Yep, I need a vacation. Two days on, two weeks off. Rest well. We will need it. See you soon. Bye, Fate. Bye, Fate. I love you, Fate. Um, I blow him a kiss. Mwah. I don't think Fate likes me the same way. Hmm. Not even just two days on the job, but two days existing as Grim Reaper. What? What? Do you see this guy's cloak? Why didn't I have cool cloak as a clothing option? Oh. Kako, that's basically your dad? Uh, no, I don't think that's true. He stirred me up in a pot. I, oh, I guess if you're working off of, say, Powerpuff Girl logic, it would count. But we could say then, I'm blowing him a kiss because I love my dad, but not in a weird way. Now we also have fucking five papers? Jesus, so many options. Wait, hang on. Cultist? Oh. Let's check out the tweets. Uh, econ e economista. Dam it uh oh. Damages from fracking deemed to be too excessive and expensive. Government vows to shift towards developing better renewable sources. Look at that, we killed the fracking man and now they can get the better energy. And we also have Culture Mag, promising young architect wins grand prize for monumental sustainable sign. That's the other person we let live. And wallpapers are the fashion of the now. Get wallpapers now or be lame. Chat, you heard it here from Influencer. You better fucking get some wallpapers in your home or you're gonna be fucking lame goddamn loser. You don't want any of your friends to think you're behind the times, do you? So we have cultist man. 
Actually, hang on, before we're looking through these papers, we should probably learn about what exactly we want. So, morning, Grim. A new day dawns. You ought to know the drill by now, but just in case, here is another simple one. No special requests today. Try to follow the rules and choose the appropriate profiles and then send them to me by fax. So we have to kill two people. Also, it notice, chat, this says two humans have to die. And that's phrasing that as quota. I think that also means technically we could kill more than that. We just have to at least kill two people. So if we look through these papers and everybody's like, yeah, they were terrible people that, you know, destroyed everything and ruined everything for everybody. We could just go, oh, well, I guess no one's living this time. So <laughs> extra credit. Huh. Yeah. Do. them. John started following a prominent lifestyle guru on social media a few years ago. What begun as an innocent interest in wall painting soon transformed into unwavering insistence that wallpaper is the only acceptable wall covering. It's him. It's all him. I'm putting him in the probably gonna die pile. That sounds harmless. Are you a wallpaper cultist? I'm looking at you. is a distinguished war veteran, these days working as a well-regarded passenger airplane pilot. They're happily married and have five children. As a hobby, Columba is extremely interested in the history of religious buildings. This guy sounds very harmless, and look, he's got big smile, he's got this nice pair of glasses. It seems kind of weird that airplane pilot man has glasses, but I suppose since he is war veteran and if he is, you know, not in the wars anymore. Maybe his eyesight has just gotten bad over time. We'll put him in the okay pile, because I don't think he is any sort of issue, nothing. No alarm bells or anything. I like paint, but wallpaper is okay. But see, the problem here is, Thoth, if you don't have, because of, because of this guy, if you don't have wallpapers, you're going to be considered a loser. So we have Leo has been in politics for over 40 years, and in that time they've worked hard on relaxing the government's meddling in the real estate market. Although nobody has found proper proof, there may have been rumors that Leo has taken many bribes from a number of realtor agencies. We might have a corrupt politician on our hands. We're going to put him in the questionable pile. I don't like these, uh corrupt politicians. I wish I could put my- there we go. Paper hidden up there. All right, and then we've got the streetcar operator. When younger Hakan was a driver of both ambulances and fuel trucks for the military, now they drive a streetcar all across Cosmopolis City and have driven it for almost three decades. In their spare time, they watch a lot of television and solve all sorts of crosswords and puzzles. This guy just sounds like wholesome friend dude. I like him. He's in the okay pile. And then we have Stellan here. He enjoys hiking, woodworking, and collecting picture frames with stock photos. They still kind of enjoy programming, but find it hard to stay up with all of the latest trends. They've seven children with five different people and lead a local nonprofit trash cleanup organization. He has seven children with five different people. Is this guy a Sims character? Cause that's all I can think of is I had a friend that would play the Sims and one of his goals was always to just make as many women in the town pregnant 
as possible. That way, there would just be tons of spawn of him all over the place. <laughs> or he does the typical Sims thing where, you know, you trap people in the walls, you set them on fire, you force them to drown in a pool, and the like. He liked doing that too. My hobbies are woodworking, programming, and fucking around. Yahoo! Spreading his seed. No. But it sounds harmless, so I think we can let him live. These guys, easy. Kill them both. Die. Die. Wallpaper is not okay. We cannot have wallpaper cultists in the world. Unacceptable. That's 80% of players of The Sims, honestly. Yeah, probably. Or, I guess there's like a two-course thing. Either you're on the side of get everybody pregnant and kill everybody. Or you're on the side of make beautiful, amazing Sims. And do RP photo stories of them. Clearly. Programmer guy is probably a cheater. I... It's hard to say when all of your information is they've seven children with five different people. It could be he just has some commitment issues. So he's constantly flipping around to new people. I don't know. could be a possible dev too that's true because he is a programmer i'm definitely gonna mark these two as living now as i hold stellan up here chat one of the points I did note, how this notes two humans have to die, if that means we're allowed to kill additional people. Do we want to try that out and see if we get, you know, slapped on the wrist if we kill more people than he says to? And we can take him out. Here's the vote for it. Kill him. Or leave him. What do you think, chat? Put in your vote. Eh, chat's like, nah, I don't think we need to kill people if we don't have to. He seems like an alright guy. We only have to kill two. So let's keep him around. Alright then. There you go, chat. We're letting him live. And thus, we filled out all our paperwork for today. Do you want seven- Thoth, those seven kids aren't going to be orphaned because they still have mothers. It's not like their mother's going to mysteriously die too, unless I got a paperwork here in the future saying how she used to have a husband who was a programmer that mysteriously died, you know? And, by the way, hello there, Slug Nugs, and welcome to the stream. Hey, Faye, I finished my work for today. Dad, Dad, my Nick, work's all done. My latest spawn. Hi. Three days you have been with us. How do you feel? I feel hungry all the time? No, I feel awesome balancing the world, getting things Excellent. done. That is what I hope to hear. As you may imagine, it is important to keep morale up in our line of work. My morale is at an all-time high. Oh boy, I love doing paperwork. The, the food just goes right through the jaw. Wellington Skellington from chat says understanding the pains of being a skeleton. Now, let me take a look at the files you sent in today. Right, everything looks to be in order. You have followed the rules and marked the correct amount of profiles. 
don't have time to watch the stream today, but I hope it'll be awesome and have a wonderful day. Well, thanks for stopping on by to say hello anyway. I hope you, too, have a good day. That really is not much else to say. You may leave. See you tomorrow. Okay, bye, Dad. Bye, Dad. Since I'm standing on the other side of the desk, I'm going to blow him a kiss again. I love you, Dad. Bye. Bye. I hope Dad's proud of me. Maybe one day he'll stop just calling me Spawn and I'll get a proper name. I'm gonna peek in here Prepare and see- for uh -huh. a perilous adventure on the ocean of quality merchandising. The items swap out. Okay, so we've got now the Tenebrous Curiosity, a fucking fidget spinner. It spins in words. It clicks and clacks. Very soothing and helpful in times of stress. More to you. Plus to others. And we've got the Plague Doctor mask. Sporting a super stylish beak, the mask hails from an era of epidemics where physicians, with little to no medical expertise, tried to alleviate the suffering of the inflicted, an ill omen. But it really fancies up my visage. And then we've got this mirror, a looking glass, gazing ultimately deep into the abyssal depth of the underworld. It reflects everything! Well, mostly just you. I call it an uh, aphotic reflector. You know, I could buy this. I can afford this. And then have a mirror up in my room for when I'm able or if I want to change how I look. However, at the same time, Chet, we have just enough for Fidget Spinner. We could get Fidget Spinner, huh? Huh? Where is my book to pull out so I can have Chet uh, voting on Skull Fidget Spinner? Chet, I remember when Fidget Spinners especially were the real hip happening thing and fucking everybody had them. You'd go to the grocery store and they'd be all over the goddamn place. My sister got a very fancy metal one, though. I never cared much for them personally. I was like, yep, that sure is a fidget spinner. Fidget spinners and vapes. Oh my god, look at that cool dude over there. Sitting in front of their wallpapered wall, smoking on a vape. Fidget spinner in their other hand. I think vapes are still in style though, right? Right, and we're putting away our coins. Let's group them. We've got skull coins and then crow coins on top. Da -da -da -da. Lovely. Fidget spinners aren't that bad, actually. I'm ADHD, genuinely good fidget spoy. I mean, a toy. There are called fidget spinners. It's just interesting. I think it's not like I've ever had them. No, now as I start saying that, I recall my dad had a set at some point of those sort of fidget ball th sort of things, you know, that make little uh, ring, ringing noises, kind of like bells that you could get, stress balls. Maybe not stress balls, perhaps, because I think those ones you squeeze, these ones you'd get a pair of two on, and then you could rotate them around in your hands. And phrasing it all like that, it sounds rather, um, like inappropriate innuendo, and that is not intentional. Let's check out the tweets. The clanging balls, yes. Pro news. All survived in a plane crash due to skillful efforts of pilot chat if we had killed that war veteran dude. There apparently would have been a plane crash that would have killed everybody. Magnet balls, yeah. Local politician dead after being struck by a car. Police have not ruled out a deliberate hit. And that's that politician we just took out. Bye! All right, so have you looked outside today? It rains. It has been raining for hours. Appropriate to accompany the despondence within me. 
Well, here are some rules for you. We have to kill three people. All right, chat. We've got um, five profiles here. And so three of them today have to die. So only two are going to be okay. And so far it has been pretty, pretty easy to say, oh, this person seems nice, but this person seems like an asshole, kill them. But is it gonna be that way forever? Because I see right here, Grave Robber, that makes me suspicious. And now we don't have any tweets doing any kind of indication over, hmm, Wallpaper Cultist? I don't know about him. But here we go, Nephis Aragon. Uh, temp? For several years now, Nephis has gone from one temp job to another. Just one more temp job and you're qualified for the real thing. The university career consultant told them, but that was three temp jobs ago. Grim, I am watching. You should mark this profile to live. Well, if th if dad says don't kill Nephis, I'm gonna listen to dad. Dad, dad, please be proud of me. I'll do anything you say if you just, you know, smile at me. Then we've got Eli over here, Grave Robber. When people started burying their loved ones together with their valuables, Eli started digging. The belief that possessions could somehow be taken to the afterlife seemed very silly to Eli. They called themselves a Tome Diver. Uh-huh, Eli. I look at him with my skeletal head. Kill someone and a job offer opens up. Take her out and some temp jobs become available. How do you get Grave Robber put on your resume? I mean, you're the one who makes the resume, so you can stick Graver on all you want to. Okay, now we've got this PhD student, dude. Chua doesn't like being called a student. They are a doctoral candidate a tormented scholar, a discoverer of drugs, and a cure of disease. Except when a student discount is available somewhere. Look at his smug ass half smile. I'm looking at this guy suspiciously. Totally cool with being a student if it gives you a discount, eh? Eh, I imagine it's probably the same with, you know, seniors, too. They're like, I'm not that old. Wait, senior discount. Tecumseh is a renowned professor, a professor of mathematics who enjoys challenging their students with nigh unsolvable equations. Oh. It's the best way to force them into being more inventive and creative, they say. Lately, they've started tutoring a gifted janitor with a troubled past? Excuse me? <laughs> Everybody looks at poor Mr. Gold over here and is like, Math! Evil! This is a movie reference. That it... With it phrasing this last sentence in particular, it sure sounds that way. Evil math teacher, uh-oh. We'll put evil math teacher over here. And then we've got Ethel Stone, retired. Ethel has been happily married for nearly 40 years. Extramarital affairs notwithstanding. They consider being a grandparent their most important role yet. They try to be cool, but have trouble understanding why some of their grandchildren aren't allowed to eat meat or peanut butter sandwiches. Um, so, uh, Ethel Stone over here has been, you know, yeah, adulterating. Is one of her grandchildren gonna come over to visit her? And she's gonna look at the parents and say, yeah, um, have a good day, um, my child and child's husband, wife, person. Bye. All right, children, are you ready for some peanut butter sandwiches? Um, excuse 
me grandma, but I'm not supposed to eat peanut butter. I'm allergic. Oh, come on now, child. You don't have to worry about it. Mom's not here, you know? Come on, come on. And then the child's gonna eat the peanut butter sandwich and die. Chat, we might have to kill Ethel in order to save a child's life. Don't be a narc, kid. <sighs> and by the way, hello there, Nadostra, and welcome to the stream. So, uh, Chat, I'm gonna go ahead and opt for assuming that she's going to accidentally kill one of her grandchildren. Not because she means to, but because she just doesn't get it. And also affairs. Death. So that's one person to die. I'm gonna go ahead and just mark Nephis straight up to live based upon the request of fate. Which means now, as I gather up these other people, we have to kill two of them. And Chet, you were saying this guy over here was an evil mathematics professor dude. I might be getting in on that math antics. But, I mean, if they're evil, we can't allow them to live. Don't kill the professor. He's not evil. The tutoring. Oh, I see. So I started reading it and I was like, mathematics. And they give out these unsolvable equations. And then chat was like, oh my god, he's a villain. And then he was like, but actually, I've been tutoring this janitor. And then everybody instead quickly swapped over and said, Oh, he just wants to help out that guy. Which means instead, Chet, I guess, yeah, looking at the other two here with the tome diver thief dude and fucking Twa over here who's like, I'm a doctoral candidate. <laughs> Excuse me. If I, there isn't a student discount involved, I would like to be referred to as a, a doctoral candidate, please. Mm. Yeah, get the egomaniac and the grave robber. All right, I'm in on that action. There's our three dead and these two live. There you go, death. I've sorted it out. Shame there's no student discount on death. You don't need a discount if something's free. Any- Oh my god, imagine if we had some criteria, like personal criteria like that. Anyone who has a smug smirk gets canned. Grim, there you are. Let us be quick. I did. Okay. All the profiles are here, just as requested. Excellent work. We're still making him proud. I, th I think we're making him proud. He's not smiling, so it's a little bit hard to tell, but... You even adhered to my little test note. I commend you for exhibiting vigilance. <laughs> Thanks, Dan. I t Thank you. I am beginning to sense a tinge of pride growing within me. <gasps> I did not expect you to turn out such a good and dedicated reaper. Making Dad proud. <laughs> oh. If you keep this up, you will get far. You may be even promoted to a middle management position. Imagine the possibilities. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> Imagine chat. Look, even the cat is happy for me. Oh, and hi there, Archon! Hello, welcome! I hope you're doing good! Anyway, I am quite still busy tonight, so you can go. Until tomorrow, Grim. Welcome to the stream! Bye, Bye Dad! He says it positively, but middle management is my personal hell. Yeah, but imagine how proud that would make Dad. I'm okay, thanks. Yeah, yeah, Archon, woof.
What ho? How can me humble and not at all adventurous self assist you today? Well, two of them are still the same, so the new item is an ethereal resonator. This resonator collects accelerated electromagnetic waves of various frequencies generated by the artificial vibration of eternal recurrence, which travel through the ether and then blasts them at you? What the fuck? What does this mean? I'm just... A, a radio? Uh... I, an air conditioner. <laughs> I like the idea of it being an air conditioner better. Alright, another day at work. Put away my coins. And 100. There we go. Charming real-life tale of a maths professor helping a young maths genius to be turned into a film. Chat, what was it? You made the comment about it being a reference? Well, there you go. That's why it's a film now, chat, because I let that guy live. In reality, this is the origin story. Grave robber found dead with a bite. Grave robber found dead with a bite mark on their neck. Spooky. Did, did we have to create zombies in order to make that happen? I, I started a zombie apocalypse. Uh oh. And chat, if you remember, one of the people that we killed was a, a PhD student working on curing things. What if he was going- what if he was the one to make the zombie virus cure and we just killed him? That's not good. And then we also have CEO of the What What social media platform planning to open a museum of antiques and relics. Is that that other dude that we let live? Because I remember one of them commenting, I like the ancient things. Hmm. All right. One, two, three, four, five, six. So we have six piles here. Good. You are paying attention after all. We cannot allow workers to doze off or become complacent. Else mistakes may sneak into the workflow pipeline. Don't worry, Dad. I've got you covered. I'm paying attention. Chat's watching too. They're keeping track of me. We're good. So, our quota for the day is to have two humans die and spare anyone with a science background. All right, Chet, if they're science, they need to live. We do not want to kill people with science. So let's go ahead. Let's start with these top two. Archaeologist. Does that count as science? That kind of leans towards it. All right. So legitimate researcher or greedy tome raider. Consensus has not been reached when it comes to this noted archaeologist. For the past five years, they've been digging up artifacts around the Ferriden region. Oh yeah, he'll stock the museum, huh? Since we do have that new museum opening with antiques and relics. Archaeology is the study of bones sometimes. But hello there, Geister Hunt, and welcome to the stream. He's a little bit dubious. Basically Indiana Jones here, by the way. That's what's happening. Let's put him down in the questionable pile. And we've got this guy who is a history teacher. Definitely not science, so he's free to kill. What? Chat. What is history, anyway? A collection of stories made up by those who have access to power. And even then, it's full of mistakes and errors. That is why Emmanuel has grown ever more interested in teaching alternate theories to their students.
So he's rewriting the books? Potentially. And what a shit. He could. This could be shit, or it could be really good, I don't know, because maybe he looks at some bullshit history and gives you the real facts. Or he looks at proper history and says, uh-uh, I disagree, I throw it out. You know? It's hard to say what kind of alternate theories he's throwing out. Is this like a mystery game? I mean, the music certainly makes it sound that way. But right now, I'm not sure if I would necessarily qualify this as a mystery game. If you have seen, um, Papers, Please, this is closer to that. A L- little bit. I don't know, he has a fedora, you know? He also has a little bit of a neck beard going, so I guess we've got that stereotype starting to roll. Chat. We've got another smirking man. However, it looks like he has a keyboard scarf, and I'm into that. Every time I see one of those character sheets, I start to get paranoid. Like, what if they worded it like that so it makes us hate him? And then you talk to him, you know, and he says, you know, all of those sort of information that they've been writing is actually all a lie and has been done and blah 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 blah. It's hard to say. Rust Angelos joined the firefighters primarily to get access to free gym. What? Hang on. He joined the firefighters primarily to get access to free gym and to woo people at bars by flexing and repeating how they save so many lives. Curiously enough, every time there's a big wildfire, they take sick leave. Chat, recall our comment about smug smirking assholes. It might hold true. Let's slide him over to the maybe die pile. How many do we have to kill? Two? Okay. That would give us one death. Give him a chance. Maybe he will save someone. If he's taking um sick leave every time things happen... Like, big wildfires? I I don't know if he's going to really do a good job saving people. Then we've got this person, botanist. Gardening is Carrie's favorite pastime and also their line of work. They enjoy growing edible exotic plants and experimenting with different recipes. They are also an expert in natural poisons. It's me, Carrie. I I like plants. And poison. I'm definitely not working for hitmen. Ha <laughs> ha, smile. And yeah, that is true, though. Uh, I would say botany is science. Which means that we do have to spare them. So, um... Okay, uh, natural poisons, lady. I I guess you get some free go, huh? <laughs> Ken enjoys their job as a receptionist more than anything. Their infectious smile can turn even the biggest frowns upside down, brightening the mood of hundreds of people every day. I love Ken. Look at his, um... Look at his smile? It's so wholesome. I love Ken. He just, they walk inside, they go, hey, good morning, Ken. I need, you know, can you direct me to where I should go exactly? And Ken looks over and goes, oh, yes, it's just two doors down the right hall. And he smiles. He looks like he just had to give someone some really bad uh, news. And still, Ken is able to keep a positive outlook Able to make you feel better about that terrible news. Ken's an upstanding receptionist man. He looks just like the archaeologist. (laughs) Is this actually the same person? Look at their age. 30. 31. Same man? Is 
long lost brothers. <laughs> oh. All right, last person. This person's in the science because it says they're a biochemist. So that one is exceedingly obvious that they're in the science background. But we'll go ahead and read their information. So Jewel was born in the countryside, but moved to the big city to go to the university. They like rock concerts and bars, although their visits have fallen due to having substance abuse issues in the past. They're trying to find a cure for the chicken flu. Chemistry man is trying to cure the chicken flu. Well, you're in the science career, so I guess we'll let you live. Uh, I hope you can work out your substance issues of use, okay? Good luck, Jewel. And then, whoops! I didn't mean to click that. I just meant to slide it over here. Let me just put it down. We'll swap places with these papers. Botanist. I'm going to consider that science, so you're good to go. I'll have to kill two people. We we're killing Rust over here, and we were definitely going to let Ken Good Guy Pome uh, Pomerons live. They're twins born at 12 a.m., and the files were submitted on the day one <laughs> was technically born and not the other. That's why they have different ages. Uh. Uh, there you go. Technically, it, lo it looks like they're a year apart, but actually they're just a couple minutes apart. If you looked at their actual, th the actual days. Alright, chat. So since we said, yeah, this fucker, he's dead. We're killing him. He's gone. We now look between these two. Do we kill Gregoire, who is put potentially well-meaning? Questionable? Or do we kill the guy offering up alternate theories? Which brother do we kill? Archaeologist is a science. Yeah, that's what I was a little bit on the fence of. I wasn't sure if archaeology was going to count as a science or more, say, history. I would do a vote. Why not both, truly? I would do a vote, but I am going to play it safe as chat suggesting too. We're going to let archaeologists live just in case it's qualifying this is a science. So we're going to kill Emmanuel, where history is clearly not a science. It's history. It's different. Goodbye, alternate theories, man. to double check. Yep, we have two humans having to die. One, two. One, two. If you spare the teacher, he will change history! America will return to the British Empire because he goes back and does. well, you know, I think they just wrote things to make it look like America won and now everybody has been misled. I say the British were the ones who won. You were only supposed to keep science people. No, it said, I believe it was that science was not allowed to be killed. Let them live. And then you just had to fill the quota afterwards. What a day, Grim. What a day. Let us go over your conduct first. I start sweating profusely. Did I do a good job, Dad? Good. I see the correct amount of profiles. Today seems to be in order. Okay, okay, I got that marked, done, two people dead, uh-huh, uh-huh. Anyway, Grim, five days you have been with us. How does it feel to make the difficult choices? I liked it the entire time, so first option doesn't apply. This one makes it sound like I don't really care one way or the other, and come on, I love the job, obviously. Honestly, I feel like I'm not killing enough people. I crave more. Hmm. I still feel awful about every choice. Every moment is living hell. None of these are I love my job option. 
So the first one honestly becomes closest to it with I've grown to enjoy it. So I'm going to go with the first option. Ah, I told you one would get used to it. Uh, at least I hope I told you. Corporate motivation and all that. Emphasizing corporate? Oh, Dad. So impersonal. But think of the humans. Do you think our office is the appropriate way to deal with them? Um, what's he trying to imply here? That we should just ditch all the paperwork and go out and kill him directly? What, what are you saying here? Uh, I haven't had any indication that this is wrong. It's a little quiet. I would say the music at least has been a little bit on the quiet ah. side. Whoop. Ah. Well, we'll see how that goes then. And it somewhat doesn't help at some parts. The music is particularly quiet at this scene. He's a traditionalist. He wants to put back on the cloak and get the scythe. Oh. Hmm. Both of these, really, if there was a choice, I think it's fine, but there's not a... The voice acting for the guy is like a whisper to me. I do have it rather intentionally uh, a little bit on the lower side, but... Uh... I did raise it a little bit there when I adjusted the volume settings. So, um, I, I, I'm i just gonna say absolutely hmm. I think it Your is. certainty soothes me. Ours is the tradition, and those should not ever change. For that is the meaning of a tradition, yes? Uh, no, not really, but um, if you think it is, Dad, I'll say yes. This control over all the lives, unbeknownst to the humans, do you not consider it unethical to make the choices you make? What? But you hand out the rules and make me do the choices. Can't worry too much if this is what has to be done. I'm not happy about the situation, no. What, what do we do otherwise? I mean, if we have to explicitly mark people for living and dying? Isn't it the case is if we did absolutely nothing? that humans would just live forever? I'm a little bit confused at how this would be unethical. I, I guess he's like, but you get to choose who lives and dies. <laughs> well, somebody has to, right? True enough. One must be in charge. The others are there to follow. Is he trying to get, like, imply here that he, that I'm trying to shift responsibility off onto him? When uh, it's kind of a lying on both sides, he gives me the guidelines and then I just follow them, but I make the actual choice, I don't know. The office is perennial and venerated. Eons we have spent designing the appropriate methods and strategies. We know what we are doing. Ah! Crow screaming at me. Oh, I do apologize for taking up so much of your time. Before you go, are there any questions you would like to ask me? Ooh, he, Dad's asking us for questions. Okay. Why haven't I seen any underage profiles, minors, children? I'm essentially asking. What's the basis for the profiles? Is there a points system? Why do all the profiles refer to the people as they? Not really. I want to know, is there a points system to these people? Oh, <clears throat> not at all. The way he cleared his voice makes me suspicious. Don't they all influence the world in many ways? The humans can't actually affect anything? You don't sound too sure about that. Mm, I am, quite so. What about Humans free will? have some hmm? free will, sure. They can make a variety of choices. Yet what matters is that they cannot escape the inevitable. Aren't, weren't you questioning about whether this is all unethical or not? The life-threatening situations that bring them onto your desk. The result of their own deeds and decisions. 
Yeah, because I guess they are in life-threatening positions, and so I get to decide. Do children not die? <laughs> they just die less often, I think. Then there are some highly complex calculations, factors and aspects that influence the situation. But that is just a bit over your pay grade, so do not worry about it. So one day, Dad, when I get promotions, I will get to know more about it? Oh boy, oh boy. Anything else? Ah, the children. They are a special case for a different set of departments to deal with. You will not find any yourself. Uh, so it's kind of like how you have pediatricians who are dedicated child doctors. The same case for death. Countless. Infinite. What? There's a lot of reapers out there then. Well, wow. Exactly. Okay. Dad, you have a lot of kids. Anything else? I want to know about animals then. Do you think animals get the same sort of decision-making process? <laughs> you get a piece of paperwork and it's like... Yeah, Spike over here. He loves going out, chasing his tail. It's one of his favorite pastime activities. He always does what his... Uh, owner tells him to do. He is very responsible, but is a little bit protective and can get nippy towards people, but tries to maintain himself for the sake of his owner. Absolutely. All living beings have to be processed after the end. No escape. Even plants. Oh my god. Yes, there is a department for plants. Do not ask about the plant department. I want to know. What exactly are the decisions being made over plants? Can I decide whether the plant lives or dies, please? I want to know more. Anything else? What about bacteria? He's saying there's a department for everything, even plants. So there's definitely a department for bacteria. How many poor plants get smoked daily? Mm. Do animals judge other animals? Seems unfair to have humans judge animals. That's also a good question. I don't know. And then by extension, do you think a the plant department is being run by plants? Plant department DLC when? That... Asking the real questions, thank you. Technically, uh, kind of, I guess. Ruins are like a type of dead. But then again, they often feel so alive. Chat. If he's saying that there's departments... Ah! For fucking ruins over here. There is definitely going to be a department for really everything. Yes, including viruses. Hmm, I must ponder. This topic is a bit too abstract for now. Let us table it. Anything else? Right. It has been enlightening. I bid you a good night. See you tomorrow. But viruses aren't technically alive or dead. I just fucking asked if non-living things count. And he said, well, ruins technically. So, um, viruses are still in that group. They're gonna have a department if ruins have a department. What about the reaper department? Hmm. And if you ask me any questions about the viruses, I work in people department, so I have no idea. Don't ask me. What about the gods department? Mm. And what about gamers? Gamers are gonna count just the normal human department. Don't be silly. Have ye seen such deals before? Tis ye who play on me. Oh my god. 
This dark cape is a classic attire for any grim deeds. It's pleasantly warm while offering protection against wind and rain, which you won't actually need as you'll always be stuck at the office. Chet, I could get that grim reaper cape. We've also got that radio, and you know what? I could afford both of them. Chet? Yeah, the cactus is back. But radio and cape, but the cactus. <sighs> now I don't want to just sit and hoard my money forever, see? But what's the point of having a job that pays if I'm just gonna sit on my money forever? Right? What else are you going to spend all that Reaper money on anyway? Exactly! Alright, yep, chat, I see you. I see you saying all the cape, yes. My, tis a true classic! We buy the see, cape. See, me and me crew were sailing round the side polar terminus, freezing our nuts off. Chat, we're getting a story Blinded too. storms, icy blizzards, them some ruthless times. <laughs> dog eat dog, they say. Or pirates eat pirates more like. Got lucky to find a whole field of tundra cotton when we did. Made some cloaks to keep the bones warm. Much too warm nowadays, though. So you're more than welcome to it. If there's a department for anything, for everything, there's even a department for money. These guys control the stark stock markets. I mean... When the stocks go up and when they fall, that's kind of like the businesses are living more successfully or dying, right? Hmm? Shiver me timbers. Tis a tale most sordid. I dare not even recall the details. But since you wish to hear it, I shall tell it forthwith. Please do, skeleton. There I was, scouting some rickety office building downtown. And I saw this in an elevator. Went in, tore it out, and made a run for it. <laughs> the device has immense power. Ye turn the knob, and infinite pleasant noises come from it. Some might even call it music. Music? Huh? Oh my god, did you see this guy walking just- Oh my god! <laughs> I'm just walking along here in the bar. Do, 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 do. What? What a good walk cycle. Oh, hell yeah. Can I not pick that up until tomorrow? God damn. I guess that is my music for my desk then. That radio gets to be in my office. But I can't... I can't wear the cape until I buy the mirror. So that mirror is gonna have to come back up at the shop. That way I can actually look at myself and say, all right, now I can put it on. Because if I don't have the mirror, chat, how, how am I supposed to know if I'm putting it on properly? I'll end up throwing it on over my shoulders and it would be all crooked and awkward looking. And I would walk into my office and everyone would look over and be like, what the fuck is, he's not wearing that cape right. Oh my God, how embarrassing. And I can't let that happen. Yeah, I could end up looking like a complete Dorcas. Definitely. It is a risk we can't afford to take. Dad would be so embarrassed. There it is! This contraption plays music! What else would it do? Oh! Ooh! Oh my god, that's happening! This song? Uh, 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 a lot less happening. Definitely putting on this one. However, I think now with uh, that going, we need the music a little bit quieter. Just a touch. 
All right, hopefully that's not too overwhelming. I grabbed my phone. All right, historians warn artifact looting on the rise, especially in formerly war-toned Ferradin. <laughs> oh, well, oops, I guess this is what happens when we let Indiana Jones live. We have to do something about the looting that's re-escalating the conflict. Uh-oh, uh-oh. A biochemist almost dies in a fire at work. They were able to get out by following a fleeing cat. Do you think that was Fate's cat? Are we saved? Young biochemist finds a vaccine for chicken flu! He did it! He's got the vaccine! See, this is what happens when we let the science man live. Chicken flu vaccine shots now free thanks to a donation from a local business. I wonder if that's related at all to anyone who we let live. Municipal gardener barely survives accidental self-poisoning. Yep, there's that botanist lady we opted to not save. Firefighter heroically escapes burning bar only to be impaled by a forklift. I'm also going to note how it kind of phrases it as escapes burning bar. The firefighter, here he was in the bar getting drinks, trying to hit on some ladies. It sets up on fire and he's like, oh fuck, oh god, I'm leaving. I'm not going to save anyone. I have to save myself. So he rushes outside and whoopsie daisy, he got impaled. And thank you, Jan Usubisky, for following. Appreciate it. Body of a teacher found in a ravine after they went out to search for the existence of extraterrestrial life. Chat, it seems that our alternate history man was also a UFO man. He believed in the aliens. He was an ancient alien dude. <laughs> yeah. The smile of this receptionist is literally making the world a better place. Hell yeah, Ken. This right here, my main man, Ken, making the world literally, literally a better place. Thank you, Ken. I'm giving him a round of applause. Ken is the best man. He's number one. Everybody loves Kim. Our small town prodigy moves to the city, we say. Reach for the stars. All right. Scientists very close to figuring out how to counter a dangerous pathogen. Okay. Rumors of match fixing in the boxing scene garner interest from investigators. I like that. Rather than Ken fucks, Ken hugs. Oh. Ooh, Ken, so wholesome. Yeah, um, someone's maybe taking some dives in the boxing arena. Research into drone warfare shows it's close to useless and woefully error prone, huh? Are we gonna have to destroy some drone creators so that we can prevent drone warfare? Hmm. All right, Dad, what do we got? We seem to be on the precipice of dark times. I may have warned you that this job can have some harsh moments. Uh-oh. Today is that day. So we have a total of six humans have to die. Hang on. One, there's, there's eight profiles here. That means we're letting two people live. At least two humans aged 35 or younger, have to die. So that's not too bad. If it was, say, have to live, then that means anyone that's over 35 is dead. So in our selection of people, we have to make sure at least two of them are 35 or younger. 
and any humans with a medical background have to die also. So we've got a few uh, criteria points, or really just the two. So we have to have two humans age 35 or younger, and anyone with a medical background. Those two have to die. But the pathogen? If we kill all the doctors with the dangerous pathogen, not be cured. But um, recall, Chet, how it was a biochemist that was curing the chicken flu. That's not medical over there. He could have been just a biochemist of some other kind. He's not a doctor or anything, so it's a different case. Drone pilot. After enlisting, Gadis dedicated to focus on the new and popular high-tech approach of drones because of their experience with controllers and because it felt safer and less traumatizing. They're hoping to make the world a better and safer place. All right, now actually, chat, the way this is phrased, you might say we should kill him. But what if it's the case that letting him live makes those drone attacks less error prone? So it might actually be helpful to have them live. However, it this is going to be much harder overall though, chat, because we have a, I'm, I'm going to decrease the music because when I have this action music going, ah, makes it a little bit more distracting and it's on the louder side. So I'm quieting that down a little bit. Or maybe we'll just have to simply change the music. Yeah, so we'll put, we'll put this guy in the maybe pile. We do have to be very picky today, yes, because, uh, six. All right, then we've got this pugilist guy. Raymond stings like a scorpion and floats like a dandelion seed? A true working class hero with a respectable career of 25 wins and zero losses. They're known for a relentless fighting style that incorporates exceptional dodging capabilities. Yet lately, it's been growing harder to get new fights and money is getting tight. Is he up on the boxing rigging or is he just, you know, he likes to be a real boxing man and he's doing it because he likes it and he's good at it becomes kind of questionable. We'll go ahead and put him into the maybe pile as well. Oh, immunologist chat. That means that's going to be in the medical career. That means they have to die. For the past 15 years, Ye has spent every day working in a windowless concrete bunker, testing various vaccines in order to eradicate some of the deadliest diseases in the world. During off times, they enjoy lengthy bike rides. Well, sorry, gay. Immunologist, medical background. Dangerous pathogen. Yay, Hama, you will die. Nerds have to die. <laughs> Sorry, eh? Nerds gotta die. It's just part of the criteria for this week. No kill. Sorry. This is also another medical career. Medical background has to die. Born to migrant parents, Kathy was expected to go far, but never became a doctor. They toiled long hours at the local hospital and loved their job, while not being gentle with needles around old patients who accidentally touched their butt. When not working, Kathy lives in a tiny apartment doing laundry, sleeping, and eating takeout. So here she is working hard at being a nurse and fucking old patients grabbing her ass and go, oopsie daisy, I didn't mean to grab your ass. That was just a slip of the hand. Smile. Well, at least this will save her from those old patients. Feeling bad about this round of choices? But, but think of dad. That, this is what dad wants us to do. Dad, I... 
just want to make you happy. Oh, I'll do anything. This guy's fucking old. 80? Jesus. I'm also looking here back at the ages real quick. What do we have? 48 and 33. So this, this lady right here, Kathy, nurse, does fill out the criteria of at least two humans aged 35 or younger have to die. So that means we only have to have one more person, 35 or younger. All right, so Shaney is a peculiar pensioner who keeps roaming all around town with a kettle in hand. Always mumbling about the kettle not being warm enough. No one seems to know what. If anything is in the kettle, it is a mystery. This guy, I would definitely want to have live. What's gonna happen if Kettle Man isn't around to help out the town's detective? Look, detective is going around town. He loves pie. He's trying to figure out what are all of these mysterious murder happenings in the town. It's a reference I actually get, because it's referencing Twin Peaks. Since a uh, Deadly Premonition also has the same type of character too. Oops. Kettle Man runs for the mayor. I need to watch Twin Peaks vlog lady. Yes. Though um I haven't actually really watched. I just know the reference. I really haven't seen much of Twin Peaks. I'm pretty sure my sister and her husband watched if not all of it, a lot of it. Still think the first two seasons are better than the new season. I haven't seen any of it, so I'll just go with what you think. Does this woman have a weird chin or a seam in the middle of her neck? I think she's just got a very powerful... What you call that jawline? It kind of lines up with that. But Dakota is a marketing genius who could sell BBQ ribs to a vegan. Their exceptional talent landed them a job as a telemarketer where they have single-handedly increased profits by 200%. They're especially appealing to senior citizens. Chet, I hate marketing. I'm putting her towards the death pile. Annabelle tells, Annabelle has devoted themselves to becoming either an astrophysicist or an astronaut. The two things are somewhat related. They also enjoy painting. Mostly nudes. Computer programming and volleyball. Uh, Annabelle tells doesn't seem bad in any case. What do we have? This side is the questionable death. This side is in the much more... Oops, I didn't mean to click that. Positive live pile. She looks so fucking old for being 20. I look at her face. Yeah, it does look like she's got a fair number of creases, but I guess that's how it is. Especially appealing to senior citizens. They do late night infomercials. Probably. And here's last person. A game designer digital artist. Suarez has always had sensible ideas and fantastical visions, which is why they're now in charge of developing the latest expansion to Planet of Peacecraft. The expansion promises an even grander open world experience along with an epic tale of deceit and corruption. All right, now, um, Slime, I see you Freaking out, gamer equals life, game maker equals super life. Totally not, wow. Um, consider the possibility though, that you know, games are pretty good. Well, what about all of the games that go, uh, hey, look at this, we're making a thing. And then they get huge, uh, huge goals, and then they spend 300,000 years in early access, and then they end up abandoning it without even completing the game. What if it's that? What if it's that? We have to save future, future customers on abandonware. 
getting bitten by backing a game early. Yeah. Because recall, Chet, we have to have two humans. Only two are allowed to live. So we have to make choices, Chet, because if we say, if we said Annabelle over here, who enjoys painting nudes, if we allow her to live, that means we have to kill, or we only have one other choice, which means we could only have Suarez live. So if we kill, if we kept her alive, we'd have to kill the kettle man or kettle person. They kind of refer to everyone as they, like my one uh, question to the Reaper guy asks, so it's kind of questionable. Yeah. <laughs> and that's true, she's making microtransaction DLCs. She's releasing paid DLC while her game is still in early access. Come on, yeah. Space Rule 34 artist or nerd programmer. Who would you rather have, Chet? I mean, technically she's a computer programmer, so, uh... <laughs> uh <laughs> Let's do a vote? That's a good point. It's pretty much... Okay, as I'm looking around, keep in mind over here, Chet, who would be, we be killing? Because we were on kind of the fence with saying this this person here who would potentially be making drones more effective and function better. We killing artists? Maybe, Gloskin. Welcome. So let's go ahead and just start voting then. Chet, Annabelle, is, uh, is she gonna live or die? Death or okay? Cast your vote. How many under 30s need to die? Two. And if you look at how many people we have around, we're going to fulfill that easily. So you don't really have to worry about that. And we've already got our two medical background people marked for death. So we have to decide who we want to live. Chat says, fuck yeah, we want this lady to live. So we're going to mark her for life. Live. Ta-da! So that leaves one more person, Chet. Whoever we vote to have live here, that means everybody else is gonna die. So I'm gonna start left to right. The kettle person, Shani. Shani the kettle. Live or die. But you already killed an under 30 with the nurse, no? Yeah, the nurse is under 30. And with everybody else that's sitting around here, the restriction is only on at least two humans aged 35 or younger have to die. So we'll get that covered up no problem. I think the counter broke. General desk vote, counter result tied. Um, we're, we're gonna have to redo that one, Chet. I'm not sure exactly what happened. So uh, let's try that again. Maybe it's even straight up to a point of uh, you can only do, no, 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 no. It's working this time. It's possible that say, moving things around, pulling things out while it was going kind of fucked it up. But here we go, round two. We're at 50-50. Now, I'm not entirely sure, chat, if you're just, uh, if it's coming up with this error because you're managing to make it just even out with all of your votes. just set chat's not quite sure should we let kettle person live ah! so let's go ahead and just move on to the next profile here how about we focus on suarez the game dev artist person do they live or die 
Ready? Here we go. The result message is broken, though. Yes, it was also partially throwing up an error for the fact it tied, so I don't know. I open it again. Let's find out. You see, you can't you can observe that it is reacting to people voting. So it's possible the error is a result of the vote being even. It just looks like there's a three or four second delay. Yeah, there's going to be a natural delay between the stream and the chat. There just always is a very slight stream delay. But if you're on mobile, it will be particularly bad because fucking mobile has delay hell. But everyone says, nah, let's kill him. We don't want any microtransactions or early access paid DLC. Leave. Thank you. Put them in the die pile. That means next, let's go ahead with the boxer main. With the boxer dude. Live or die. Yeah, 30 up second delays. It's it's the worst. Here you are enjoying stream on mobile and you see chat suddenly start freaking out over something that happened on stream and you pretty much get spoiler for what's gonna do. They're like, oh my God, I can't believe streamer died. And you're like, wait, streamer doesn't win this boss fight? Oh. Nobody wants the boxer to live. Boxer dies. All right, Chet, that means we're on the last two. Kettle? Or drones? I bring out the drone pilot. I open the book. Gorilla jamming to killing of these nerds? Yeah. So am I. Uh-oh. Chat really on the fence. Does drone pilot live or die? Uh-oh. error that's happening here is just it's supposed to just say tied but it's broken chat it seems like you can't make up your mind we did kettle vote twice we did drone vote once it came up with tied all the time so uh chat doesn't know it didn't count my vote well thought i guess it doesn't want you to decide coin flip Well, I make the decision then. I, I scroll my pen across their paper. I bring it down between live or die. Pen hovers over live for a moment. It hovers over die for a moment. It hovers in between then it makes its way down towards die Regret this, Kako. I regret everything. Hi, 
hang on. Hang on. The bar's open. I enter the bar. What? We've got this red-haired person, and we've got Gus. He's all transparent -y like me. Hang on. Do you see that in the background? Not, not the Grim Day. I'm not looking at the Grim Day over here. I'm looking at the Quartermaster Mortimer at Plunder Emporium. He's got a nice little advertisement there. Look at him. He's got a little skeletal smile on his face. It's even all framed and all nice. Wow. It's so nice. Hang on. Hang on. On the other side of the wall. Employee of the month, Reaper 667. Chat, do you think I'll be employee of the month one day? Maybe? I hope so. I That would make Dad really proud, I bet. All right, Gus. Who are you? The air is eerily cold, as if frozen in place, too scared to move an inch. Hi! Dad, I... what, what do you want? Oh, I, I'm a new groom, number 36. What's up? A fresh-faced lemon head. Uh, exactly well, what I wanted to see today. It, I, I think he's being mean to me. Hey now, Gus, play nice. Well, seems I'm stuck with you now. Oh. You want to ask questions or something? Uh, uh well, uh, well, what do you do here? I'm the janitor. I clean up the damn mess you make. What? What do you mean? Mess I make? Liquor, spirits, booze, fire water, rock cut. Get after something. Oh, I see. He's complaining at me because I'm a reaper, so I'm a skeleton. So if I drink any alcohol, it makes a mess on the ground. And he's like, God damn... Goddamn reapers coming down here thinking they can get a drink and then they just make a mess on the ground and then I, janitor man, have to clean it up. Gus, it's my first time here in the bar. I never... I've never made a mess myself. Ever looked in the mirror or thought about the clientele of this place? No, I don't own a mirror. Where do you think the drink goes? None of you have a stomach. Anything you consume falls through the rib cage straight to the floor. <laughs> oh. I didn't really think about that. Yeah, you reapers hardly ever do. Always self-absorbed. Oh, I... I try to be considerate of, uh, of other people. Or could be at least a little more considerate. Gus? I appreciate you. Gee, uh, thanks. I... I mean that earnestly. Eh, something else you wanted? Can you tell me about your job? How do you clean things up? Simple. I float around and I possess stuff and make the stuff float into the trash bin. He, he possesses the ground fluids and makes them float their way over to the trash can. Like dust, for example. One dust particle at a time. Or the drinks. One droplet at a time. Chat, I remind me if I ever do a job swap, do not become a janitor. This is literal hell. I see now the suffer on his face. Hang on, if he has to operate by one dust particle at a time or one drop a little drink at the time, does that mean if he ever tried to possess somebody, he could only do it, say, one little skin flake at a time and he would have to have an entire army of ghost friends in order to actually possess somebody? He possesses my heart? <laughs> Gus. That's weird, but also very cool. Excuse me, self, but um, this seems like hell. Isn't that really tedious? Maybe a bit tedious, yeah. He says very sarcastically. As if the highest management ever gave any thought to us lowly drones. We're all nameless custodians and spawns to them, literally. He, yeah, Dad calls me spawn too. 
I've got a name. Do I have a name? I don't think I've ever referred to myself as a name. Uh, I'll I'll make a name for myself. Get us four laborers when you're climbing the corporate ladder. Oh, uh, I'll remember you, Gus. Eh, something else you wanted? Sorry, they're hella cool. Is that the person you're sitting next to? Why, thank you. It is. Nothing but a sweetheart, ain't ya? Oh, Gus. Ah, shucks. You're the only one who truly treats Gus with respect. I- Gus, I want to treat you with respect, too! What's that supposed to mean? I don't think this could be the case, because I did not mark any janitors to death. Because you thought I'm the ghost of some dead human, or beast, or what? I- I, I mean, that's what I spend my job all day doing, and you- do look like a ghost? I don't. I don't mean to stereotype. I guess. Of course not. Oh. Oh. No. Oh, ghosts aren't mere residue, a relic of humans, animals, or whatever other entities. We're just ghosts. We're beings unto ourselves. Gotta go, kitty. Well, thanks for coming on by to watch for a bit. I hope you have a good day. I am the ghost of a ghost. What? What? What if a ghost dies, and then they become a ghost, and then that ghost dies, and then you become a ghost of a ghost of a ghost, and then that ghost dies, and then you become a ghost of a ghost of a ghost of a ghost, and then it just keeps going in this manner? Oh. That, which means, yeah, the, hang on, you were a ghost, and then you die? Much. Does that mean you're practically immortal? You you'd first have to be alive to count as immortal. Oh. It's a bit more complicated than that, but honestly, I ain't got the patience to teach a ghost history, so... I guess, you know, chat, have you ever wondered about what happens to the undead after they die? They just go on an endless death loop. It's kind of... Oh. Chat, it's kind of like being in a video game where you respawn, right? Except instead of being normal human, you are some otherworldly creature. Wow. Mm. Is this how it works for you, Skelly? You die and then you just, you know, you're an, uh, a skeleton of a skeleton. And then that skeleton dies and you're a skeleton of a skeleton of a skeleton. And so on. Eh, something else you wanted? Nope, that's it, Gus. I love you. Yeah, yeah, I gotta get back to work anyway. One dust particle at a time. All right, now I'm gonna talk to bartender. Hi. Hello, hello there. I'm Sari, and I welcome you to Cerberus's Den, the finest drinking establishment this side of the void. <laughs> all right, now this lady is particularly quiet, but I've already got voice turned all the way up, so I guess she's just gonna be quiet. I sure as heck haven't seen you before. You must be brand new. Yeah, this is my first week! Are you just dapper like the River Acheron? Yeah, it screams vintage. Thank you! So, how are you liking existence thus far? It feels pretty good to be alive! You know, in, in a sense! Look on the brighter side of undeath, eh? I'm sure you never thought this was how you'll end up. Well, no, maybe not exactly, but I'm still having a good time. These are the cards we are dealt. Mm -hmm. Okay, newbie, before we continue, I got this little, uh, game <gasps> I play with every fresh-faced patron. It's real simple. I love games! All you gotta do is answer a series of questions, and I'll craft a personalized what? drink inspired by what you said. It's like a quiz. Does that mean I can get an A on that quiz? I wanna get an A! Oh boy, oh boy! I love right, quizzes! The gist. I'll describe some sort of an situation and you answer how you'd react i usually do four questions and nothing else to it okay i'm ready to go sari let's go here we go prepare for question number one. First question chat first question before you lies a table teeming with plants. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. you have to eat one of the plants your very life depends on it okay i have to eat one of these plants chat there's no other choice what kind of plant would you prefer to eat Alright, so we've got the corpse flower, a raffalesia, an apple, cactus, mushrooms, all of them, a rose, maybe like two sequoia. Fucking cactus? Why are, Why is essentially cactus listed twice? But come on, we eat the apple! 
time for question number two. We stay simple. You eat the cactus? All right, more apples for me. You find yourself in front of a very difficult situation. Moments after having made a choice, you realize you made a grievous no! error. I, an error? This can't be happening. At you for this poor decision. There are a few options for proceeding. No, no. I don't... I don't make mistakes, chat. I can't make mistakes. Everything's on the line. Next up, question I don't three. make mistakes, chat. Almost there. After being tasked with creating a computer game about dating monstrous eldritch gods, you've come up with several characters. Ooh, I make a dating sim? Which of the possible god beings is clearly the hottest and most dateable of the lot? All right, chat. It's time for the dating sim question. We've got this one mostly abs, but with a gorgeous blonde mane. The blind idiot god, at least they're fuzzy. A grotesque tree with a warm heart. And we've got one arm eternal flexing. I can, oh my god. Ethereal beauty, if a bit translucent. Half wolk, half ram. Half tank. Wolfram. You know, chat, there is a calculator app that's called Wolfram. Half calculator. I picked the calculator right, app. Final stretch. As I said, four is all anyone <laughs> ever needs, right? Wolfram Alpha, that's it. You behold two doors, one plain and old, the other forged of gold. The old one seems to imply disgrace and shame. The golden door cries of nobility and grandeur. It's up to your brave soul to make the first choice. Which door will you enter? <laughs> Doors are for dimwits. I'll break the window and jump out. That wasn't outlined in the question. She said there was door and door. She didn't say there was a window. How am I supposed to break the window? How do I even know that the window is there? I would not choose this option. It does not fall within the logic of the quiz. I opt for the one of prudence and modesty. We got it. Let me just calculate the results. We'll take a moment. I like the idea that I've also picked the I don't make mistakes and the door of prudence and modesty. I'll use a cactus I ate previously to make a window. You huck the cactus at you. You barf the cactus at the wall. The cactus and acidity melts and makes a giant hole, and you jump out the hole. <laughs> hmm. Leans to stability, prone to conformity. Mm -hmm. I've got the appropriate concoction in mind. She gives me a glass of water. Start off with a nice mixture. Four centiliters of gin, one centiliter of elder. Um, flour, she's being very specific here with syrup. exact Just measurements. I didn't really expect her to be this precise. In some lime juice concentrate oh, wait, no, here's where the uh, art element comes in, I suppose. All right, I... <laughs> Okay, I'm pleased with the- She hands me the drink and I take it. Oh, my own personalized drink. I, I like this. Thank you. Quiz tells no lie. I think a suitable name would be Borehole. Borehole? Like the hole? Like, like a hole in a bore? Like it's really weird and powerful and cool? I, I interpret this as a bore, B-O-A-R hole. Or the whole boar, boar hole. So you think I'm powerful like a boar? You know, like the whole boar? Oh my god, I... Oh, how nice of her. I sip it happily. First one's on the house. Goomba! Nod to the bartender. The drink. Smooth waves rolling onto the coast, then receding. Gradually, a constant rhythm of symmetrical alternation grinding off the edges. The taste recalls a harmonious interplay of physical forces soothing a turbulent soul, until all that's left is a polished plane of alabaster. It's 
almost a death changing experience. All of the answers are eh. eh. I'm gonna say it's reasonably yummy. Mm. Heck, an like understatement it. of the century. Now, what else can I get you? I like it. That was tasty. Your tip jar, by the way, is pretty neat. I don't know where the tip jar is at. Oh, thanks. Mortimer found the original linker on an excursion to the shrouded zones. Wow. What does Gooba mean? I shrug. It's a bit of a hassle, though. It keeps multiplying all the time. Take your eye off for a second and bam, tiny piglets everywhere. What? Uh, um, huh? How is it multiplying? Or is there a secret? What? Go on, take one. Just make sure you feed it with some coins once in a while. Oh, okay. Thank you. I guess I've got, I guess we got a piggy bank now, chat. Uh, can you also tell me Shut about the janitor, us. please? Spooky one, eh? <laughs> don't mind the grump, it's a ghost thing. I guess ghosts are all grumpy. Gus especially has a pretty dang irascible nature, but there's a layer of performance to it. In truth, they've been hella helpful around the den throughout the ages, and I'm grateful for that. Besides, the office itself couldn't operate without Gus and company. What else you got in mind? I'm not gonna ask her for a drink, because now I took the one she made for me personally, because that was special personalized drink. But now thinking of poor Mortimer... Or, what the fuck? Not Mortimer, a skeleton man. Gus, the ghost man. Thinking of him having to clean up the fucking mess that we make from drinking beverages. I don't think I'm gonna buy any drinks. I think we'll just be heading out then. Au revoir, little reaper. <laughs> Au revoir, little reaper. Bye, Gus. Bye, Sari. I... Look, I can't even talk to Gus anymore. It doesn't let me. Bye, bye. Oh yes, I didn't talk to Fate at all. Hi, Fate. I'm here to talk to you, Dan. Did I do a good job today? Ah, Grim. It looks to be a rough day out there. New recruits often falter during dark times. Yet you seem to have performed adequately. How do you feel after such a day? There was a lot to do, but I worked it all out. Good, good. We have to do what is necessary, even if we do not fully understand why. Talking to Dad while sauced up, you're right, I did go down to get a drink first, and I would imagine I'm not- Wait, hang on, I probably can't even get drunk because I don't have the stomach to contain- to, to contain it, right? There's no processing happening? Can't get drunk? Let us hope these days do not continue. Any idea what happened? Uh, well, it- looking at the tweets and whatnot, it seems like some sort of medical calamity, like an epidemic? Interesting. An insightful streak may yet rattle inside that skull of yours, hmm? I'm not sure if he's somewhat implying that he expected me to be stupid because I don't have a brain or what. Off you go now, Grim. Good night. Maybe, but how did you taste the borehole? Memory? And no brain to get drunk feels. Also a fair point. I'm just a skeleton man. I look at the box that's on my non-existent dressing room. It looks sad. Very sad. Did I get paid for today yet? Can I uh, roll on Good down paper. here? Me ship oh. of goods is at your service. Guess it doesn't matter because he doesn't have a mirror right now anyway. But I see he's got an anals of uh, transients. Anals of transients. They help keep track of any passing temporalities. It counts days in a month from 1 to 28. Those are all of the days. All of them. Okay. We already looked at the Trinity. And here's some unholy smokes. Ah, a visage which is equal parts 
bold, gruff, smooth, and cool. Straight from the old days when expensive advertising told me smoking was cool. Death sticks. I love that it has little... Little skull on it, though. It's such a cute little skull. Hmm. I buy the pack of burn, burn death sticks just so I can rip off the little paper section that has the cute little skull drawing on it. Do you think I could buy a sketchbook and draw my own little picture of me? Ooh, look at that! Oh no, my piggy bank, it got covered by all the papers, no. Somehow there's always room for more coins, infinitely many. This pi th this piggy bank has some really powerful legs though, oh my god. I take my coin. Ooh. I pat pig on the head. And then I put the pig away in the drawer. All right, let's check out the phone. So, what is astrophysics all about anyway? Let Annabelle teach you. Wasn't one of the people that we let live last time named Annabelle? Hmm. Well, none of our current people are named Annabelle, so. That piggy bank reminds me of my high school ceramics class. <laughs> yeah, when they would be like, all right, one of the things you have to do is make the clay piece to be just like this. Make your little life's rectangle, yahoo! Annabelle was a nude artist astrologist. Oh my god. You're right. There you go. Immunologist dead as epidemic hits hardest at those trying to combat it. Telemarketing company bankrupt after death of key marketer. That's right. Fuck that marketing lady. Nurse breaks neck after slipping on bedpan left lying in front of a stairwell. Ooh. Raymond Scanlon bleeds. Man of brass unbeaten on the square. Stabbed to death in an alleyway. Well, there goes the kettle, man. And hello there, Dagnardio, and welcome to the stream. Myst oh, wait, no, that's different. No, 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 no. This was the boxing guy. And then this person beneath them is the Kettle Elder. Mysterious Kettle Elder goes missing during latest tour of the city. Then young game designer dies of a stroke caused by overuse of poorly tested smart drugs that supposedly help focus and increase energy levels. Game designer was trying... Taking those performance-enhancing drugs. That's what happens, chat. You die. Alright, instructions for today. Okay, see if we can clean up the mess from yesterday. That might give you just the boost you need. Do not forget, you may leave troubles behind, but new ones always lie ahead. So, for today, we're going to have uh, two humans at least have to die, and spare humans who seem helpful against... The troubles. Do these pieces count as the troubles? Because the troubles currently seems to be the case of anything viral related. I guess we'll go. I also see as this piece of papers lying here saying fraud CEO. I look him in the face. I look back. I look him in the face again. Charlie has been helping their brother Albert David hide corporate money and avoid paying taxes for years? Perhaps even decades? They've also been accused of insider trading and other fraudulent activities. They currently live in a mansion just outside of town. Tax evasion. That's in the death pile. What an asshole. Then we've also got scam artist, a liar and a grifter. 
Francois is an ex-politician who has spent many years writing books of ignorant nonsense. These words and actions caused a veritable butterfly effect of misery on a global scale, which they now profit off of. I slide him up towards death group also. I don't think these two people sound very helpful against the troubles. I don't know about them. Andreas is a traumatized veteran of the Marisola Peninsula conflict, now living on the streets. They are very good with animals and are a staunch vegetarian, even while being in the rough. Sometimes one has just seen too much suffering and death. It almost makes you want to kill him just to, you know, so he doesn't have to suffer in life anymore. I'm gonna let him live. Andreas? Keep caring about those animals, alright? Alright, now we've got Jake over here. A self-prescribed chemist loves to create new interesting recipes in their kitchen with chemistry. Jake's latest work involves mixing opioids and uppers. They also enjoy showcasing their new inventions at the local club scene. Chat. Jake Bartoski over here. Drug mixer, man. Having a good time. I don't see any reason to kill him. He, if we die, he'd probably die from an overdose. <laughs> Jake Bartowski? More like Jake Party... Party Ski? Ho, 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 ha. Dead? Dead him? Kill? It's too late. I let him live. Nayadi. Online alias... Cryptomancer hacker was inspired to become an IT specialist and hacker by reading old cyberpunk novels. They were arrested and banned from using any computers for 15 years after they crashed the Cosmopolis dark market. They're still very interested in modern cryptography algorithms. Chat! What if they were one of the creators of crypto coins? What if we stopped that from ever happening? Then we've got Gerdhart over here. It cuts and carves stone blocks out of stone at the local quarry. That's basically it. There's very little else going on in their lives. Their dream is to visit some of the highest mountains in the world and maybe cut tiny chunks of stone out of those too. Gerdhart just wants to cut stone. Living her best life. Her heart go wild. A crypto miner, that's what Nayadi is. Hell. Oh, Alright, chat. So, we've got our remaining party out here. We've got scam artist Francois. Broad CEO Charlie. Cryptomancer Nayade. I don't know if any of these people seem like they would be helpful against the troubles. But I think I'm just gonna go ahead and straight mark these two to die. Kill. Kill. And, um... Cryptomancer must live for Doge to do as well, well as if I give a fuck. Chat, is this gonna be our first over? It just says two humans have to die. Again, it does not say we can only kill two humans. So are we going to opt for death? I think so. I kill the Cryptomancer. Bye. I want my 3080. Kill, kill, kill. Oh, yes. First bit of extra credit. Hi, Dan. Welcome, Grim. It is the end of the week. 
Your performance review draws near. How do you think you have been doing? I've been crushing it, Dad! Profiles coming in, I send them out, oh, just like clockwork! Interesting. Hmm. Yes, your answer has been recorded for the psych eval. Huh? Now then, before the assessment, let us look over your daily conduct. I see more people died than required. Okay, so do I- can I only kill the number that you have listed? It does not bode well for the evaluation, but such is death. Let uh, us get started. Alright, I would say this is a uh, confirmation that it isn't the case that you're saying two people have to die. It's really a only kill two people. Because that phrasing does make it a little bit unclear if it means, uh, this, I can't just let everybody live. You have to kill at least two people. But it doesn't want me to go over that amount either. Now, where did I put those papers? Ah, here we go. Right. Looking at these stats, the numbers say... Okay, come on, Dad. Your conduct over the seven days has <gasps> been most excellent. I am, sincerely, <gasps> surprised and pleased by your display of loyalty. Chad! We're surprising Dad! He, he loves it! So much so that the office <gasps> has deemed you fit for a raise. Even more money?! I don't like money, but keep it can change, chat. We want to make Dad proud. <laughs> thank you. Oh, do not thank me, Grim. We are just getting started. Just getting started? There's more? More to come? Speaking of, the raise also comes with a, a prize. prize. The office is proud to present you with an award of excellence. Oh. Display it proudly oh. on your workstation. Chat! We got an award of excellence! Making Dad so proud, I think! Yes! This is it! Chat! Dad just applauded me! Oh my god! <laughs> ah! Do not let this cloud your judgment. Of course not. Mm -hmm. You still have mm -hmm. much to learn and many rules to follow. Of course. This has been hard. Does it get you? <laughs> Very cool non sequitur. Just, I like ice cream. Don't worry, Dad. It'll be easy. Piece of cake. Careful, Grim. Huh? That is exactly the kind of hubris that will lead to a downfall. Oh, oh you're right, Dad. I'm sorry. I... It'll be hard, but I can work through it, all right? As such, your seven-day evaluation period has concluded. You have passed. No! That is all. Until tomorrow, Grim. I passed, Chet. <sighs> Mortimer, Mortimer, I passed. So I trigger to ward off a curse. I can also get the mirror and put on my fancy cape now. Yes. Oh, tis wondrous marvel. Uh huh. Once upon me and me crew sailed the southern seas and came across an accursed lighthouse. Plundered the lot of it. Even the mirror. Is this where this mirror's Built from? the frame from beautiful driftwood washed ashore from the ship we rammed into. <laughs> Covers it in all gold, too. Coarse. I, a proper beauty. It is a good mirror. Oh. A fancy suit. Bow tie edition. This suit would make me look sharp and professional, while the bow tie adds a subtle flair of levity. Fit for the funeral of clowns? Ooh. Oink. Mm. Knock, knock. Huh? Uh, um. Hello? 
Hello. Kind of you to finally answer. But this is the first time I'm hearing you talk to me. Who are you? We are the exalted Chimera, envied by all the blind, arrogant fools. We are Angst Ex Milio. We are nothing. A despicable failure. We are Elan Vital, the guide who won't lead astray. If only you learn to listen. We are death. How does it feel? We? I- huh? I don't understand! I'm confused! You know, dying. You do remember, right? Free flyer suit. Thank you, thank you. Be seeing you, Reaver. It's a grim world out there. Because I'm a grim reaper. Eh? I look at the camera. Eh? Alright, now I don't believe I bought any hats, so there's nothing new there. But we did buy- Ooh! Look at that Stone Cold Classic, they have names, hang on. God. I guess when I bought the cape, it came in different color variations. We also have Anon. Pearl, holy shit. Red Christmas. Vampire. Wild! Witch. Ritual. Autumn. Oh my god. Chat, I didn't realize how many fucking capes we got out of this. So business, just another job. Destiny, pop punk, salesman, the undertaker. Queen, street punk, lit. All right, chat, man. I'm not gonna spend a million years. I'm Christmas ghost. I'm the ghost of Christmas past. Spooky. I like now there's a thought bubble that's that come floating wasn't in here. so good, was it? It's okay. We can figure it out, make it work. Crisp yeah. and clear like the azure pond at the forest glade. Are you, are you telling me what? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Actually, what this makes me think of crisp and clear like the azure pond in the forest glade makes me just think of FK in the coffee. Clear as a crisp spring morning. I can see it, Zach. Hell. I can do this. You were born for this. That's what fate keeps telling you, ain't it? I, I mean, yeah, of course. It's like a surge in your spine. A faint echo of a perfect chord. It's very close, Grand Reaper. Grand Reaper? I like this voice. This voice seems pretty nice, chat. Huh. Hmm. I end my day happily sleeping in my bed with my new cape. Alright. Now, I know the stream here is a little bit on the shorter side, but hitting this, getting our week one evaluation, we got to check out what was happening with this mirror. We saw the shop and bought some things. We went over to the bar. I think that makes it kind of a nice wrap-up point for the stream. Maybe. We'll see. We'll see how I'm feeling if we'll come back to it next week. If not, eh, eh, still gives a good point. This was pretty good. And sorry, Arthur. Yeah, coming in at the very end here. Still. Thanks for at least coming on by to say hello. What not? I hope you've been doing well, Arthur. Thumbs up. And thank you everybody who has come on by to watch. Whether you came at the start or midway through or at the end, it's appreciated. And yeah, chat, make sure you know the number of channel points we have for that uh, Saturday to do that channel point emote making. <laughs> And, of course, thank you for those who have resubscribed, and thank you for those who followed. All very appreciated and nice. So, let's see. Looking over, I see Voicebox is currently streaming. 
And it won't be very long here, chat. For the bee emotes. Hmm. 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 Buzz buzz. I hope you all have a wonderful day. And I'll see you next time. Hmm? Farewell.